the first screen I would see, uh, you would see as you log back into your site. Um, and if you'll notice, we haven't yet completed your application for healthcare. Great. And as you go down, we have no other submitted ones and we have no enrollment history. So we're gonna go ahead and resume completion. Um, there's a number of sections. Uh, this is um, definitions of your household. So for purposes of the marketplace plan, a household is, uh, Lee, in your case, would be a husband and a, uh, husband and spouse. And if you have any dependents living at home for which they would you would claim them as dependents. If you don't have any, it's a two-person household. So level one is the most highly subsidized. That's the medical assistant expansion program. Generally speaking, you'll be able to get policies at no cost to you and very modest co-pays and deductibles. The next level is private insurance known as the Minsure Marketplace or Affordable Care Act policies. They are not Medicaid expansion policies. They're actually private health insurance. And they come with one of two kinds of subsidies um, or both. The first one is a premium subsidy, which is what you may know as the advanced premium tax credit. That's administered concurrently. So every month you pay your premium, the government puts your subsidy right on top of it and it reduces your out-of-pocket premium. The second type of subsidy would be what's called a cost sharing reduction subsidy. Those are available to people who purchase a silver metal tier plan and that reduces co-pays and deductibles and co-insurances. If you... If you have an advanced premium tax credit subsidy, in general, rule of thumb, it takes you from about 38,000 of a household of two per year income up to maybe 110,000 per year of household income. You've got that eight, you've got some type of premium subsidy. The lower the income, the higher the subsidy. The higher the income, the lower the subsidy. If you're at, you know, 40, 3,000 roughly down to 38,000, you get both of those subsidies. So you both get a premium subsidy and a cost sharing reduction subsidy. Um, you get both of them only if you purchase a silver plan. We're making a good faith estimate based mm -hmm. on what we know today. When you submit your taxes for tax year 2024 in April of 2025, We'll have an additional sheet that you complete as part of your tax filing. It's essentially a reconciliation sheet that goes with your federal return. Uh, I believe it's form 8629. And it's not difficult to fill out. It's going to say, what did you think your income was going to be? What was your income? What did we think? What did we know your premium subsidy was? What should it have been? And then the reconciliation. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah the reconciliation is going to say either I get a larger tax credit, i.e. Okay. A, a bigger rebate, or okay. a smaller tax credit, a smaller rebate on my taxes. Um, and so the reason we want to kind of be close, one is just we want to be honest in all of our yes. reporting. Right. Secondly, yep. we don't want a big swing in our taxes come time we file. Okay, so... This is the one where I mentioned earlier, they're going to request information on your taxes going forward. Just keep in mind that although you, I generally tell people agree to this, um, they oftentimes cannot get your file by the time your eligibility determination comes around of September of 2024, so that you may have to submit your actual 2023 taxes. All right. But um, for most people, they're comfortable giving the five-year window. Um, this means that you will authorize the state of Minnesota to have access to your uh, federal tax return for a five-year window of time. You're okay. 60 years old, correct? So yep. that, would yep. through, that would take you through your Medicare eligibility, at which point it becomes irrelevant. And one of the things you'll uh, notice when you get to Medicare, so I may mm -hmm. as well give you this information now, Medicare uh, premium is mostly income immune, meaning whatever your income in is, is your Part B Medicare premium, unless your income is very high. If your income is very high, you will see your premium go up and you go, well, what income do they use when I get to Medicare? They use your modified adjusted gross income, just like this one does. 
The difference is instead of it being prospective, meaning looking at the year you get your policy, it is your income is retrospective, two years. Okay. When you turn 65, it matters what your income was in when you're 63. When you were 63. Yes. Okay. Okay. So why would I tell you that now? Because a lot of times when we get to retirement, we do things that cause adjustments to our income, like sell right. recreational real estate or do Roth conversions, things like that. And if you do enough that it boosts you to a new income bracket, it can adjust your Medicare Part B premium. And it'll be two years later, it'll be too late to go backward and undo it. You ready to submit? I'm ready to submit. Okay, this is when you're supposed to do a little drum roll. This is the eligibility determination. It takes about 30 seconds. All of your data is winging its way across the universe and coming back. You qualify for, for financial assistance to buy a health plan through Minsure. Congratulations. Yay! Your premium tax credit will be $1,665 a month, meaning whatever plan you shop for, your premium will be reduced by a federal subsidy to the tune of $1,665 per month. Because you're nice. high enough, you're not eligible for what's called a cost-sharing reduction. That was the other kind of subsidy. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't think at your income level that would happen anyway, correct? Right. Right. All right. So this is very good news. Uh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice subsidy. Should be able to bring your uh, premiums into a very manageable level. Okay. Yep. We're going to go ahead for today and just go ahead and skip ahead to plans. I, okay. I'm assuming today you, know, you don't want right. to pick a plan. You just want to right. kind of see yeah. what's out there. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'll give you a tour of these. So you'll see again, medical plans and dental plans. The 20 medical plans are individual products. So there might be, for example, um, two insurance plans available in Mauer County. Blues of Minnesota, that's a mutual, or Medica, yeah. yep. that's not-for-profit. Those are the only two. So that between the two of them, they are offering 20 plans. Okay. You can sort the plans based on these features. You can also pick a plan type. EPO is a ultra-narrow network, and a PPO is a broad network, but you pay a little bit more if you go out of network. Okay. Okay. HSA eligible, um, just between you and I and the fence post, that's probably one you're, well, you may go for, um, but based on how you will be using healthcare, you won't be able to make right. a contribution to a health right. savings account. Yep. Um, the metal tiers tell you what the actuarial value of the plan is. Bronze is 60% actual actuarial value. And that's a lot of fancy terms. And all it means is that you get benefits on average for an average person of your age band, gender, and smoking status. Your mm -hmm. benefits returned would be approximately equal to 60% of your premium on average. Nobody's average. We know mm -hmm. that silver would say you're going to get 70% value back against your premium and gold would be 80%. Those are federal requirements. So when it says gold, it's 80, silver, it's 70, bronze, it's 60. The benefits may look different with a bunch of different bronze products um, and they are allowed to do that. So you kind of sort into which metal tier you want and then mm -hmm. you mix the benefits to fi figure out which one you want. You can also hard hard and fast set your deductible. Again, based on our conversation, you're probably gonna be going mm -hmm. higher on the deductible and mm -hmm. using this more like a catastrophic, uh, if I'm very, very sick. Yes. Kind of yep. You can sort based on the plans. Okay. okay. And you can sort based on star ratings. When you go to the plans, um, you'll see the metal tier listed across the top. And whether it's an HMO or a PPO, this is an EPO, which means it's a narrow network. This is your premium that you will pay after your advanced premium tax credit of $1,664.84 has been applied. Okay, so the net to you, giving you an orange. So there's Medica, gets the first five. These are rated by lowest premium. Blue Cross comes in at 
the sixth lowest price blonde bronze. And you'll see this new phrase HSA. That means it's a qualified high deductible health plan, which means if you could set up a health savings account, that one you would be allowed to use. Not all of them are qualified health savings accounts. Okay. Yes. Yeah. As you go down a little further, you'll start to see the metal tier changes. This is silver. Uh, okay. So that means now we are at a higher actuarial value of 70%. And you'll see the benefits get a little more generous. And you'll again see Medica, Medica, Medica takes all of the lowest positions in the silver plan. You follow mm -hmm. them here. Yep. And then Blue yep. Cross comes at the next two. And then you get into um, the health savings account eligible ones. At the very end, you get into a gold plan. Medica again takes the two lowest and Blue Cross Blue Shield takes the highest position. So you go, what does that tell you? As an insurance person, that tells me that the, the terms that Mayo Clinic has negotiated with Medica are more favorable than what they have negotiated with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota. Because to list in Maurer County, you have to have Mayo in contract. So um, that's kind of what we knew in our informal conversations. Medica is going to have better pricing because they tend to have better terms and better prices they get from Mayo than the Blues do. If you do then the comparison, you end up seeing side by side the type of plan, EPO, EPO, PPO, yeah. right? None of these are HSA compatible. Again, probably not a big deal for you. No. The yearly deductible changes, and you would expect that as you go up quality of medical metal tier, and then um, individual and family. So um, that just is a distinction between if the, you're out of a family of two. So if the combined medical expense between you and Lisa reach that, you automatically hit your deductible as well. Uh, the prescription drug deductible is embedded into the product, which means as you hit co-pays on your pharmacy spend, it's okay. taking against your major deductible. Okay. And then the out-of-pocket maximum uh, would be the most that you would have to pay um, as either an individual or a family in a, you know, challenging health year. And the specialist might be the one that's of, you know, interest. Outpatient diagnostic services, again, it might be one of those ones where hopefully you don't ever have to use them. But if you do have imaging services that are not available through healthcare, just so you know mm -hmm. what you're getting into there. I always tell people, you kind of um, think about how you approach making um, what I'm going to call decisions with uncertainty. Uh, economics, mm -hmm. we call that decisions under risk, but I don't want you to think there's yeah. risk. We just use mm -hmm. the word risk to designate uncertainty. So right. you, have a, you have a health status now, Lisa has a health status now. Um, a lot of people approach decisions under uncertainty with a certain degree of um, both emotional factors and logical or rational factors. Um, and we're all different. So some yep. lean a little more toward the emotion, some lean a little more toward the rational side. And with married couples, there's always kind of, particularly as long as you and Lisa have been married, there's kind of this balancing game. One kind of brings the other back to uh, a good equilibrium. So um, I just tell people lean into however you make decisions. If it stresses you out to make decisions under uncertainty and you want to hedge your bets by getting more generous benefits or and you'll pay a little more for that because then you feel less anxious, it's worth it. It's not mm -hmm. worth being distressed all year, wondering if the your health is going to bottom out and you're going to have a big financial thing. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, you lean toward, you know, if it happens, it happens. I'm gonna, I'm okay with that. And we've got cushions in place and that's really how you live. Then mm -hmm. you can lean to what I call a skinnier benefit plan accept a little more uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Knowing that you've capped it with your max amount of pockets and your deductibles. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just say, know yourself, know how you operate as people and recognize that one of you may be a little more apprehensive mm -hmm. than the other and vice versa. But it's a yep. family policy. So you kind of have to find a compromise between the two of you.
There's this thing called details. You can look under each line and you can do this yourself. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to show you, um, I'll just show you real quick. You can check doctor. We know that Mayo is in network because that's the only option in Mauer County. Um, it gives you this summary of benefits. So we're going to hop out real quick. This is standard form language. Every Affordable Care Act individual and family plan must use this form. Yeah. Questions are identical. So if you want to compare, this is not marketing material. You want to compare plan to plan right. to plan. You get these blue documents and it, it it's in English language. It's designed to be readable and understandable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, what this, this yeah. second one does is this is what Medica puts together, and it's a very detailed summary description, not in standard language like the blue one, but yeah. Medica does a very good job with that, and so does Blue Cross if you choose to go that way. It just yeah. really goes into details. This tab will give you your provider directory, which you know of, and then the drug. If you do have drugs or medications, it's really important to find out what tier they're on just to make sure you... Um, kind of know what your co-pays are. I'm sure. guessing based on your health history, you don't have a lot of medications no. you're taking and you're probably going to be fine. Some people choose not to use their uh, pharmacy under their health insurance. They go to a coupon pharmacy like Mark Cuban or GoodRx or something like that. And you may yeah. find those are much better pricing. The only downside is it won't count towards your deductible. 